Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guests have a new series on the Travel Channel called Portals to Hell, uh, in which they investigate the world's most ridiculously haunted locations suspected of being gateways to the spirit world. They are far, far braver than I. I'm super excited they're here. Uh, Jack Osborne and Katrina Weidman are in the building. How do we feel about that, everybody? Are you excited? I'm excited. You are correct to woo as such. We're going to bring them out in just a moment. But first, I believe we have a peek at the show ahead of its premiere this Friday. So let's go ahead and run that clip. Are you back in this room? All right. We're here. We hear you. It's the REM pod. You brought us back into the room and you took us out. And you brought us back in. Are you playing with us? Can you help me figure out where to go next? So I can get evidence? That's where Jack is. Jack is up. Okay. I'll go up. I'll go up. It's heavy back here. Yeah. So this floor definitely has like a darker energy, it feels like. It like, plays with you up here. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we've been doing the whole time. Yeah. We'd be down there, it'd make a noise here, we'd come here, we'd go there, we'd go there, it'd come back here. So whatever it is, is, is flowing freely. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. talking to up here. Did it just say Santa? Did I hear that right? Yeah. We feel the story is actually much darker than we really anticipated. Jack and I need to get answers for Betty and Joshua. Where do we go to get those answers? Down. Go down. Down. The basement is definitely a place where we have to go back to and investigate, especially now that Joshua was giving us this warning that girls specifically don't have a good time down there. The worst things he does are to girls. You know, obviously, I'm the girl. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back and spend a significant amount of time down there to see what happens. Jesus. All right, guys, make a ridiculous amount of noise. Jack Osborne, Katrina Weidman right here. Hello. I told you. Braver than I. I'm not that brave, trust me. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get it. We are going to unpack the hell out of that clip in a second. But okay. first, how, how are you guys doing? How's life? How's press going? How's everything right good. now? Yeah. Good, good. yeah, it's been yeah. a good day. Yeah. yeah. Been good so far? Yeah. yeah. Is it weird after doing this for you two to hang out in places that weren't previously the scene of a grisly murder? I mean, uh, well, we are in New York City, guys. So <laughs> it's, you know. Roll of the dice. Anything could have happened in this building. Exactly. We have no idea. No idea. <laughs> Um, well, that's awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, I was uh, saying backstage uh, earlier that uh, this show is fantastic and terrifying for me, and I really enjoyed watching. I got a chance awesome. to see the premiere. Cool. So congrats on this. I'm really excited Thank to talk you. to you guys about it. Uh, you know, you seem to have great chemistry together. You work really well yeah. together. We're buddies. Um, yeah. yeah, you're buddies. <laughs> how, how, where did the idea for this come? People do travel shows all the time. They go, they eat amazing food. They go learn about the history of places. You guys are going to haunted basements. Whose idea was this? Where did the idea come <laughs> from? Uh, so my, my production company produced it, and yeah. we created it and it kind of came from a really just organic conversation with our friends at Travel Channel mm -hmm. and um, originally I wasn't even planning on like hosting it we we're like hey we've got this idea for a paranormal show and then they're like you want to host it and I was like okay sure <laughs> um, and you know when we kind of really what sold the show was the name Portals to Hell yeah. um, they liked it thank you yeah it was, it's a good one um, and they were like, you need a partner. And I was friends with Katrina on social media because we'd both, I mean, Katrina has had an extensive career working in the paranormal. Um, and I'd done a few paranormal shows in the past. And when they sent over a list of, hey, why don't you reach out to some of these? Katrina's name was at the top. And I was like, hey, 
I know her. Yeah. <laughs> so reached out, and uh, here we are. Yeah, for sure. In the paranormal show's world, Katrina, you're a huge get. What was it about this show that you were like, oh, I want to do this with, with Jack. This looks um, like a fun time. I mean, I'm always looking for new ways to investigate, you know. And what I liked about Portals to Hell when, I, when Jack and I talked about it was, you know, there's kind of this concept. You hear this terminology come up of portals. And, you know, but it's not every single place that's allegedly haunted. It's certain locations. Right. So it becomes like, what is it about those locations? And they tend to be the more negative experiences that people have. So being physically attacked, being violently attacked. And it becomes the question of what is it about those specific places that make them that way where people are having these experiences versus like, you know, your grandmom's house that has the ghost from 1910, you know, <laughs> hanging out in the <laughs> attic. Like, what's the difference there? And then when Jack and I really sat down and talked about it, you know, we have the same philosophy of the paranormal and the same goals. So it, it just made sense, you know, to, to do this together. Yeah. Where, how did you, it, you kind of tap into it a little bit in that response, but in terms of formulating the list of places, the, the premiere episode, that clip was from uh, Juneau, Alaska, if, mm -hmm. I, if I'm correct. Yeah. I saw you guys go to Skinwalker Ranch at some point. Yeah. Uh, there's all these amazing, how did you come up with that list? Um, well, we kind of, I mean, Katrina weighed in on some. We all just, you know, our producers, the network, like everyone just kind of came together and we were like, all right, where's the scariest places? And also, where are some places that have not been on, uh, you know, any ghost hunting shows? Because yeah. at this point, there's probably a, easily a couple thousand ghost, show, you know, episodes out yeah. there of shows. There's I mean, like two places that have never been investigated. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. And we kind of found <laughs> those two. You found at least one of them that yeah. I know we of. Went, yeah. We went to four between. We went to a couple. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we got some really good gets. Like we got into the LaLaurie Mansion, which no one has ever been allowed you in. You were the first. It's yeah. No one ever has or been there. So yeah. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. That, yes. was, that was pretty cool. I'm yeah. That was like that. the top of like my bucket list. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be next level because you're right. The, the, there's been crews out there. There's been people exploring these places. So wherever you go, a majority of the time, you're not retreading, but you're having your own personal experience. Totally. You think, but when you're the first crew to yeah. go to a place and explore it, and it's, it's like all a, uncharted territory. It's like yeah. We peed on a fresh fire hydrant. <laughs> like, that is my fire hydrant now. <laughs> <for real. laughs> my gosh. Did it feel different than the other places because that was the first, uh, you were the first to pee on said hydrant? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, here's the interesting thing. There's so much, um, like, myth and legend around the LaLaurie Mansion. It was kind of, it took a while to cut through it all. And, yeah. and how, you know, it been, it burnt down, it'd been rebuilt. It was a school, it was a shop. It was all these different things over the years. And so to really understand that even the layout of the building took a, a bit of research. It's pretty amazing. Did you guys do how, it uh, looks like Alaska was a huge pain in the ass to get to. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep, totally uh, was. Which it tends to be. Um, but did you guys do all these, how'd you film it? How production worked? Did you do them all back to back? Did you give yourselves breaks in between each places oh, just yeah. mentally and physically? Big like time. I'm a big fan of like coming home for a few days after a shoot. Yeah. yeah. We had to do like three back to back yeah. where just the, how, how it lined up with locations and everything like that. And, th and that was rough, I think, oh, because, you know, house. you go into these like very negative places and it's, it's not just a negativity, but it's also you're dealing with some heavy stories mm. yeah. of history. You know, so it's like, oh, yes, all these patients were, you know, br brutally tortured and, you know, the 1800s. And then you go to the Laurie Mansion and you learn about you know, the atrocious things that she did to her slaves. And it's just, it's constantly just a mental weight on you. Yeah, and I've also got kids, so it's good to go home and see them because, you know, <laughs> i got to make sure that, you know, they're all good. Well, that's, um, well, I had a couple of questions. Looking at that, because we see in Alaska episode that you guys, you have a tough time getting to sleep. Yeah. So, like, I was wondering, is that consistent from place to place? Just in general, whenever you're in those areas, that energy makes it hard for you to... That was the fact you the only investigation where we ended up staying at, the actual okay. place we were investigating. Um, Katrina has a habit of sleeping. At, I uh, do. I sleep at haunted locations. <laughs> a lot. And I don't. I've lived in quite a few. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and you bring up that you have kids. So one, I doubt you're getting enough sleep at home either. So. Well, it's true. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm used to kind of being up a lot at night. So, yeah. Have you ever, uh, either of you, were you ever concerned of something, some energy following you back? Oh, You're yeah. going to been the there. most haunted places. Yeah, we had, had that. Been there? Been there. Yeah. We actually both had it happen to us. That's well, so, about that. let's talk about this. Yeah. So we went to, it's a haunted honky tonk in Kentucky. It's That's called, a thing. It's a <laughs> thing. <fun>. Yeah. <laughs> and it's called Bobby Mackey's Music World. And it's one of the most infamous places in the paranormal community. And uh, probably, I mean, if anybody's ever seen a ghost show, you've heard of Bobby Mackey's. So we went because they have a well in the basement that they literally call the portal to hell. 
you know, that's like the name for it. We're currently yeah. in a lawsuit with them right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go and, you know, we had experiences and they were weird, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like this off the hook, crazy, you know, thing that everybody talks about. You know, you meet people that have claim that they've been pushed, that they've been scratched, they've been possessed, all that stuff. And, you know, so it wasn't that crazy, crazy stuff. Like, neither of us got possessed. No. <laughs> like, you know? no. We did so, have a crew member say his oh, head yeah. felt like it was on fire and he had to go home. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we found out later that he was in the basement being like, come at me, bro. Yeah. And like, <laughs> yeah, totally. And then he was, no! and then he like an hour later, he's like, I have to get out of here. My head is on fire. <laughs> what the hell yeah. possesses a person? Uh, forgive the term. But like, why would you taunt a spirit? I like don't, that? we don't know. Noob, yeah. total noob. <laughs> yeah. That's like rookie move 101. <laughs> So wow, that's amazing. we leave this place and we were warned by a bishop. We met with a bishop there and he was just like, don't go in there. It's going to ruin your lives. I've seen this <laughs> so many times. We're like, oh, OK. Yeah, we ended up and we just ended up going. We're like, whatever. And um, so we go. And when we come home, it was like three days later, Jack and I both ended up in the emergency room on the same day. And we both had two separate mediums who have each only met us once. Contact, don't know each they other. don't know each other. They contacted us separately. Neither of them knew what we were doing for work at the time. And they both said, you, you got something with you. And you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. What kind of panic attack do you have after <laughs> receiving that news? <laughs> I go, what am I doing? <laughs> this was a terrible idea. Oh, God. I, yeah. How do you... How do when somebody tells you that you have something with you, do you like? And I guess I gotta get a Ouija board. Like, take what do you do? Take a <laughs> yeah, take a hot shower, take a cold shower. Like, what do I do? There's go on a, no going some penicillin. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 you, you like process that. Yeah, uh, you uh, you get smudged. So like the yeah. medium will come over and do a smudging and like exercise the demons out of you and. You know, and I mean, listen. You cross your fingers and hope. Yeah, and you go like, all right, I hope this works. <laughs> I mean, it seems just like lighting some stuff on fire and saying a thing. I, okay, well, that's all it took. All right, I'll go. take it. All right. But I have had weird stuff happen since then, though, at my house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Have they? <laughs> I, get, I got, I, the other night, I was, it, I, I got woken up by someone saying my name in the middle of the night. Like, I would just fallen back to sleep, and I heard someone go, Jack, in my room, like, Jack, how old are your kids, man? Uh, seven, three, and fifteen months. All right, they're old enough to fuck with you, man. They're yeah, but that, here's the thing, though. It so seven wasn't them. Old. It was an older female voice, and and I'm daddy. I'm not Jack. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah I guess a Jack is a big leap for a seven-year-old. It is, right? Yeah. Unless they're being, you know, unless they're really being tuds, then it's only then they only say Jack. Uh, have you uh, have you had anything in your house in your in your when you sleep in your home yes. violate your space <laughs> like that yeah. all the time? Yeah, it, it becomes kind of like this thing that just happens, and you, yeah. you're just sort of like, okay, I mean, it's part of the territory. That's interesting. It just happens. So does that mean at this point, what is what is doing this line of work and, and being in these places and having experience all this? What does that do in general for how you process fear of like heights or I don't know bees or something like? How do you, like <laughs> other fears that that uh, you would like conventional fears? What it, happens? It honestly it changes that. your. I mean, it's a complete paradigm shift. You know, because here's the thing, we're taught to be scared of this stuff. And we don't really know what this stuff is. You know, what, where that knowledge comes from is, you know, religious texts and folklore and books and movies. And, you know, there's cases in the past, like especially when you look at um, older investigators like the Warrens or Hans Holzer, that it seems to match up with that, right? Experiences that people have seems to tell one narrative. But, you know, we're investigators. And, you know, there's no hard, hard proof that that's the case. We know stuff happens that we can't explain. So it's really you have to push past that fear. And when you do that, you realize that fear is just, it's your mental state. It's not, a lot of times it's not based on anything. And especially with the paranormal, at least, it's, it's really just what we've been taught to be scared of this. And maybe there's no good reason to be scared. Yeah. But like I said, I'm going to really hit on that. Like, we don't know what this is that we have encountered. And, and here's the thing. It could be some strange atmospheric anomaly. It could be, you know, that we just don't have the ability to, to, to really understand yet. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, ha I do like to say, like, you know, we're not coming here being like, ghosts are real and it's right, this right. guy and it's this, it's that. Because at the end of the day, it's with not there to prove or disprove. We're just there to document what we're encountering. Which is a pretty reasonable, level-headed, scientific sort of approach to this. Do, do you ever find yourself uncomfortable when you like meet people on the road that are 110,000% all in, that ghosts are real? And oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You kind of have to feel the room out. Totally. We like, had a couple of those. Yeah. You, oh. We did, yeah. And I think it's, you know, I guess 
one of the times I feel the most uncomfortable is when people, they don't understand what we do, and they're like, why didn't you do this? That's a, the spirit of a little child. And it's like, well, but we don't know, really. Yeah. I mean, we're working within certain parameters. Totally. But, you know, we also want to break those parameters and see what else we can discover. Yeah, because yeah. we were just discussing, you know, if I die, I'm going to come back and haunt people, but I'm going to take yeah. on the form as a beaver. A beaver. Because <laughs> how weird would that be and freaky if a beaver just starts screwing with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> already have difficulty <laughs> believing stories of spirits showing up. No one's going to believe the guy that says a really angry beaver showed up. He was vaping and, like, hanging out. Like Not angry, just rude. Just a yeah, yeah. beaver. Yeah. He was vaping in my living room. Made himself a cup of coffee. Freaking jerk. Didn't even ask. Uh, thank you. All right, we're going to go to questions in a little bit. Okay. we still got a couple of minutes left. Uh, but before we do, uh, you talk about all this investigation. This show, you used some really cool toys. Yeah. We got a, a glimpse of, of something in that mm. clip that the speaker, the what oh, yeah. What the hell is that thing? Talk to me about that. Yeah. That thing's wild. So basically, so everything in the paranormal that you see people use is fringe science, right? Yeah. So nothing's 100. But there's a lot of really amazing engineers that work in the field and scientists that work in the field, and they're all trying to come up with ways to document this stuff. And what you guys saw, it's called ITC technology. And basically how it works, there's a couple different ways depending on what you're using. But um, the one that we were using, it scans through radio waves. And the thought is that you know, something intelligent, some sort of energy form can manipulate those waves to come through intelligently. So it's kind of like, in basic terms, it's a telephone to the dead. Mm. So Wild. As yeah. you do. Yeah, you know, as you do. <laughs> and Tuesday by the morning. way, <laughs> I was the most skeptical about it. I'm like, yeah. there's no way, Katrina. Like, there's, like, okay. Like, yeah, uh, it's yeah. a, but we had one incident where we, it, we were getting some strange readings on another one of our devices, and Katrina goes, if you're here with us, tell tell us using the geoport how many people are in the room right now. And you hear as clear as day, nine. And there was nine people in the room. My Siri I, on my iPhone can't even do that. <laughs> like, so I was like, what the, like, how is that happening? Yeah. yeah. That's wild. And then it would say people on the crew's name a lot, mm -hmm. but like their yeah. full names. Wow. Yeah. That is intense. Yeah, it's really what, weird. What is, I mean, that sounds like it's at the top of the list where I was going to say, because you have a lot of cool toys. What's the coolest, like, neatest gadget you got to play with or experience? That seems like that's right up there. That one's I mean, good. What me, else? Yeah, uh, what other so. cool things did you guys, because I saw a cool camera on this uh, yeah. Yask episode they we, were using. We, yeah, we got some cool, like, these great little cameras that just these home security cameras, but instead of, you know, when you have to go through, when you do a 12 hour investigation, you've got 12 hours of security footage to go through. So this camera will truncate all 12 hours into like a five minute clip where it just shows where all the movement was. So it's really cool and you can just blast through, you'd be like, hey, what was that? Why did that move? And then you can pull up the actual shot. Um, and then we, some of the most simplest stuff, you get the best results. Like we, uh, doing like EVP recordings. On our last investigation, we had a really amazing EVP recording. That's when you just have like a tape recorder or a voice recorder and you just leave it down and ask questions. And when you play it back, sometimes you pick things up which you can't hear with your ears for some reason. Yeah, yeah. pretty nuts. You had, we had talked very briefly backstage uh, about the Alaska episode, and you said there's a lot of stuff that uh, that didn't make the cut. Mm. How do you make that decision? When you have crazy, creepy stuff that happens and you got to make the call, does this yeah. go in the episode or not? How do you decide? It, it all comes down to the, the, the narrative that we're trying to accomplish. So we, you know, there might be all these weird little stories, but we've got 44 minutes to slam in four days of filming. And it, we just have to make, we have to be able to tell the most concise story. And sometimes these strange things that happen just don't really drive the main A story along. And so we just like cut it and we'll, you know, we'll save it for online. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I really, really dig this show. Also, awesome. congrats. Thank you guys did a great job. I'm excited to see more of it. We've got a couple of questions from our audience, one from Twitter. Uh, we'll go to that one first. This is from at jhayes88, and he says, for Katrina and Jack, do you feel like the moments you have on the show in person translate well to camera? Do, do, your, do you ever experience something creepy and wish it came across better on film? I mean, I think the show does a really good yeah. job of expressing our, you know, our experiences. I think maybe sometimes, you know, it's just, it can be really hard to show or have a viewer feel the fear that you're feeling at the time because you're just not there yeah. and you're not actually in that environment and you're not meeting these people who are speaking Latin and telling you there's a demon behind you. You know <laughs> what I mean? So it's just like, oh, um, so I think sometimes that's hard, but I think Portals does a really great job of showing what it was to be in those locations. And, and we actually had to tone it down. Like the first, you know, when we worked with the network, kind of getting to our, you know, our, our comfortable place with the show, 
it was really, really creepy. Yeah. And it was really different from any other paranormal show. And there was the concern that it's so different and so weird and darker and genuinely creepy that it might actually scare people too much. <laughs> so we, they, we had to kind of back, yeah, we had to dial it back a bit. How often are you in the room where something happens, you go, holy shit, I hope we got that. Oh. That's got to be the whole shoot. All the time. All the time. And like that, and even in the moment, we like, check that. Did we get that like right now? And yeah, we got it. We yeah. got it. Cool. Uh, great question. Thank you for that. We've got two in the room. First one's going to be right over here. Go for it. So, hi, Jack. Uh, my name is Tariq, and I basically hey, have Rick. a question. Um, were you nervous about bringing any bad spirits home? Like, did you have to light any sage and open oh, yeah. up the windows or anything? <laughs> totally. I mean, like, yeah, we were just, you know, we were talking about that story. It's, there's, I'm definitely a little more cautious now. And because I was like, oh, whatever, like, nothing. That's all BS. It's not going to follow me home because I've done it plenty of, you know, paranormal investigations and never worried about that. Um, but kind of, but yet I'm still kind of a skeptic. I'm like, well, maybe something was just here and I never realized it. or Because I'm like, where is it? How is it traveling with me? Is it, does it like just sit on my lap on a plane when I fly home? Is it transporting through time in a portal? Is there like a Stargate somewhere I don't know about? Like the logistics. Yeah, and that's right? my thing. That's where I start going. Like, how is this entity able to travel with me? Yeah. So that's kind of where I go with it. How do they travel with us? We don't know. I mean, we just know that people have these experiences. That That's the crazy part is that, you know, people are so willing to just say it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. But then we have, you know, hundreds of years of hundreds of thousands of people having experiences, and it can't all be nothing. Yeah. What, what, this is a dumb question, but if no, in your lifetime we did, f you found definitive proof how would that change the, the trajectory of your, what would you do with that information? If we Retire. had the, the, no. the <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah why not? That is the thing, though. Like, because, well, I mean, listen, we live in a, a world of fake news and alt, yeah, oh, you know, exactly. Yeah, Even if we matter. did and we were like, no, straight up, they're like, yeah, but, yeah. you know, it's like yeah. global warming. Everyone's yeah. like, there's always those. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's like, well, the flat earthers. All right, yeah. got it. Yeah, exactly. No matter how is what. that a thing? I don't know. It's man. so <laughs> bad. <laughs> the fact that flat earthers exist on a <laughs> growing scale it boggles my mind. Yeah. All right, uh, that was a great question. These are great questions. I got one more. Let's do one more. Uh, come on down. Come on down. Hi. Um, this is an online question. Okay. Um, what is one characteristic in each other's character that you wish you had and why? Ooh. I wish I was not as afraid of the dark as I am because Katrina is totally fearless in the dark. <laughs> I'm like, mm. I think for Jack, I love how logical and skeptical he is of everything. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Like, he comes in just very much. I mean, you're very pragmatic about everything, and I appreciate that so much about him. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Those are very sweet, sincere answers. Thank you for that question. Uh, were you always uh, not afraid of the dark and stuff no, like that? No, I was afraid. I used to be afraid, for sure. But yeah. it was it was one of those things where the more you push yourself and the more you, you have to get into that mindset of, you know, I for the paranormal at least, you're only afraid because we've been taught. And you have to realize that maybe that's not, maybe what we're being taught isn't accurate. And once you go there then it changes everything for you. And there's times I still get scared because it's just a human reaction of, you know, that fight or flight. You know something doesn't feel right. Or, you know, if you see something fly at you or you get scratched, it's scary. Mm. But you recover faster, I think, from that fear because you know, you know, we're investigators. We're here to document this stuff. And if we run out of a house, then we're not doing our job. Right. Jack. I kind of am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've always been fascinated oh, with paranormal totally. aspects yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. considering like who your your family is and where you grew up, you didn't have a damn chance. No, you were gonna true. be fascinated. Yeah, exactly. Like, I had no option. You, you kind of grew up around it. Um, I'm run, I'm out of time, sadly. Uh -huh. uh, but I've really enjoyed having you guys That's here. Great. Thank you so much yeah. for coming and hanging yeah. out with us. Uh, thanks everybody for your questions and tuning in. I'll remind the world right now the the series premiere. It's on Travel Channel this Friday, the 26th, 10 p.m. 9 Central. Uh, Portals to Hell. It is a damn good show. Turn the lights down. Get a friend. Watch it. Have a great time. Uh, everybody, make a ridiculous amount of noise. Join me in thanking Jack and Katrina for being here. Come on, do it up. Yeah.